music degree in vocal, vocal performance from the University of Minnesota and earned a, oh, hang on. I've got to tell the computer that I heard its message. There we go. And he earned a sacred, a degree of sacred music, uh, degree in sacred music from the Cantor's Institute of the Jewish Theological Seminary. He was recently, he was awarded from the, from JTS, an honorary doctorate of music. So this very accomplished man is married to Rabbi Laura Metzger. They are the parents of a daughter, Natanya, and sit back, be ready for a wonderful study session with Cantor David Lip. Thank you, Hazan. And I will hire you out to introduce me anywhere you like. Um, that, was, that was really quite lovely. So um, thank you, Cantor Berman. And um, in absentia, I want to thank uh, also Cantor and Rabbi uh, Jeff Myers, who invited me to teach. And I'm just very honored to do so for many years. Um, I've taught, a, depending on what decade it happened to be a six, seven, eight, or even nine week course on Israeli popular music. And when I was asked by Rabbi Hazan Myers to teach this, I, I thought a selection of Israeli popular music that deals with the resilience of the Israeli people would be appropriate to the anniversary we commemorate today, which is five years since the most deadly anti-Semitic single attack in American history. But um, really little did I know when I was asked to do this that I'd be talking about a similar relevant milestone in Israeli history commemorating, as I'm sure you all know, the worst day of death for Israeli Jews or Jews period really since the Holocaust. Now, just this past week, after I had put the class together, uh, a new song came out from a singer I hadn't heard before. And oddly enough, when I tried to access it earlier, for some reason, I could not find it. I couldn't Google it, but I'm going to show it to you um, in just a moment um, on the screen. And um, this uh, this keynote will be made available to you after the class, um, if you like. I can send it to you, so, or you know, or it can be sent to you from uh, from Tree of Life Central, um, and you can uh, try to find it yourself. Hopefully, you'll be able to. It was um, released by Atara Ohira. Um, she released it just this past week. It was in memory of police officers and border guard soldiers who laid down their lives protecting the southern settlements. And uh, she, she first gained widespread recognition when she appeared on the television show, The Next Star for Eurovision. Um, she released this piece again, I, I believe I saw it Tuesday um, while I was out of town in honor of those who like Nachshon, who I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you've heard of. He's the one who, according to the rabbis, he, was the, he actually jumped into the Sea of Reeds even before it split, kind of um, you know, uh, you know, moving God's hand as it were. Um, towards that miracle. And of course, there's so many Israelis that do that on a regular basis. So I'm going to show you um, on the keynote, just so you can see uh, this particular piece. We'll also be listening to music, but, but this one, for some reason, I was not able to get to play for me. This is, uh, this is her in the upper right-hand corner. Um, when If you can find this video, which I hope you can, um, after the class, at the very beginning, you'll hear kind of you know, these radio um, alerts of uh, reports as people were figuring out uh, what was happening on October 7th. And, um, and then the text of the song, um, you know, they, they run into the fire um, without warning. Because if there's a fire, I'll show up. I'll always, always jump in first and take the shot. I don't know how to stop. Um, and, you know, that's kind of the, you know, the chorus of this piece. So I... Um, I invite you to find it if you can afterwards, again, just at the very beginning of the class. It was not opening for me and I and I couldn't find it, so I'm not sure what happened. So what I'd like to do now is um, go back to before Israel became a state. And early Israeli settlers were trying to create an old new culture. They wanted to create new music, new art, new visual arts, new oral arts, all kinds of arts to see what would it be like for Jews who actually work and live in the land to create their own culture post-biblically, because they felt, rightly or wrongly, that, that so much of the culture that had developed over 2,000 years when we did not own the land, when, when we did not have any kind of independence in the land, they felt that, that you know, in a sense, that wasn't quite as, as, um, um, as authentic as they wanted it to be. And so, they did a lot of contrafacting. Now, a contrafact is kind of a fancy term for um, 
for a parody, but it's not intended to be funny necessarily. But sometimes what they would do is they would take a Yiddish song, they would take the music from Yiddish song, and they would write Hebrew words for it. Now, this is one in particular from 1912 that really, at the time that it was written, and it's hard for us to believe this at the time, it was probably more, um, more popular in its time than Hatikva was. And Hatikva was already, it was pretty much considered kind of the anthem of the, of the early Zionist movement at that time, but this song was actually more popular. Um, you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, the Yiddish version of it, and I've translated for you with the staff of wandering at hand, without home and without a land, without a redeemer, nor a friend, without tomorrow or today, no tolerance, merely pursuit, always oi, 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 always gay, 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 mean go, go, go in Yiddish, always wander, 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 as long as we have strength. And in Yiddish, mit dem wander stock in hand. Okay, so you've got this song, which, kind of has an upbeat tune to it, but it's very sad. It's about how no matter where we go, we have to wander somewhere else. We're not welcome anywhere. So what they did um, in Rosh Pinah in 1912 is they took this melody, they put Hebrew to it, and they made it exactly the opposite in content. It's a, it, rather than wandering from place to place, not owning anything, it's about actually marching in your own land that you have cultivated. Let's just listen to a little bit of this so you can get a, a, a taste of it. Oh, it didn't let me do that. Hold on, let me try that again. Goodness gracious. Technology, here we go. There we go. I just wanted you to get a taste of that. We'll be hearing a very modern version of this song at the very end of the class. So I just want you to kind of hold it in mind um, as something that comes from before it was a state and now even as a very advanced state, how it's heard today. So what I'd like to do is to give you a taste of at least one song from each decade of Israel's 75 years to give you a sense of how Israel has handled various wars, various um, challenges and struggles that it has dealt with. Um, for those of you who have ever been to Israel, who have ever driven from uh, Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, you've probably seen this picture. You've probably seen this sculpture. It's like a hand reaching towards Jerusalem because of course, when the, when the initial partition took place and when Israel declared independence, Jerusalem was isolated, and they had to send these armored cars in order to bring um, supplies to Jerusalem, and they would invariably get shot at, and many of them didn't make it, and so there would be cars along the way, and um, it's, of course, something that we never thought that we would be seeing again, but, of course, we are seeing those cars, very mo much more modern cars, near Gaza today. This is a, a very popular um, song from that period, from after the War of Independence. Even though the War of Independence was ultimately a victory for the Jewish people and for the Zionists and for obviously the state of Israel, um, which allowed it to keep going and allowed it to make it to this day, there in almost every war that Israel has had, even the ones that were definitely ones which Israel had won, whether it's the, the War of Independence or the Six-Day War, I always find there are far more songs that commemorate the losses involved in those wars as opposed to songs glorifying the win. There are such songs in Israeli popular music, but they don't tend to be the ones that stick. Um, Bab El Wad is, is probably one of the most popular songs um, from the War of Independence. Um, if, if you didn't notice, Bab El Wad is, is Arabic for Shar Hagai or for the, the gate of the valley. It's the gate of the valley that one drives up 
in order to get from Jerusalem to, excuse me, from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem with supplies. And so this is a, a taste of Bab Elwad. Of uh, course, just from a couple of weeks ago, we have, I mean, if you've ever, again, taken that road from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, you see that they left some of those, some of those armored trucks that had been um, stopped by bullets on the way. Um, there, there are still a few that, that line the way. Well, now we have uh, much more modern cars to look at so much more, so much more recently, I, again, when I was asked to do this class, I certainly never considered how relevant that song would be, um, even to this day. So, similarly, um, with um, with the Six Day War, there are, of course, many songs that are associated with the Six Day War. The obvious one being Yerushalayim Shel Zahav, and yes, I could have presented Yerushalayim Shel Zahav, and that's a you know, one that's that you know is very popular for all sorts of reasons that it was written right before the Six Day War, and she changed all the verses or a number of the verses in order to, uh, you know, understand the new reality where we could actually go into Jerusalem as opposed to longing for being in, you know, you know able to be in Jerusalem, um, which she rewrote after after the Six Day War. But again, there are at least three or four very very popular um, Israeli songs that come after the Six Day War again, talking about the losses associated with the Six Day War, as opposed to um, the, you know, what was considered by pretty much everyone, uh, you know, an incredible triumph, as it were. Not that many triumphal songs, far more uh, songs of poignancy and of loss. Um, one of the many, um, again, is the Ballad of the Medic, um, Shira Chovesh. And uh, I have the words here, but I, if I'm not mistaken, the, the video that we're going to watch does include a translation. Um, this was sung by Yoram Gaon, 
um, one of Israel's uh, greatest singers of the time. And um, I think uh, I think the song uh, speaks and sings for itself, the, the, the ballad of the medic. Hold on. I think I need to reshare because I don't think you're seeing what I'm seeing. Hold on just a moment. Let me reshare my screen and make sure you can see this and hear it. Can you see it now? Yes? Okay, good. Start again. Again, the um, the songs from the from the Six Day War you would have expected perhaps to be a little bit more 
um, celebratory, and certainly Israelis were celebratory after 1967. But again, most of the most popular songs um, were either ones that 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 begged for peace afterwards, or that um, that were relevant to the losses that were sustained. Um, so, in the 1970s, 1973, Israel turns 25, and there's a there's a poem from the 1950s which really kind of exemplifies this kind of very um, energetic Israeli spirit um, of, uh, you know, suddenly a man wakes up in the morning. I mean, it, I mean, it's really hard to translate this the way it sounds in Hebrew. Pitom kam adam baboker amargish ki am. Suddenly a man wakes up in the morning and feels he's a nation and begins to walk. And to everyone he meets, he calls out shalom. And of course, shalom, you all know, means hello, goodbye, and peace. But I mean, all of those meanings kind of are wrapped up. It's like, he just, he's, he's not walking around. It's like, he's walking around the neighborhood saying, you know, putting out his hand in peace. Now, this is 1973. This is before the Yom Kippur War, which will ultimately, I mean, as devastating as that was for Israel, and we're thinking about that now, 50 year anniversary of it with what's recently happened. Um, it did lead to the peace between Israel and Egypt, which has saved God knows how many lives on both sides. Um, in any case, this is this is written and and it comes out at a time when um, the army bands, in other words, the you know the bands of uh, of rock groups that come up through the army are becoming some of Israel's best known acts. And Shlomo Artsy is one of them. This is his Pitom Kam Adam. פתאום קם אדם בבוקר ומרגיש כי הוא עם ומתחיל ללכת ולכל הנפגש בדרכו קורא הוא שלום פתאום קם אדם בבוקר ומרגיש כי הוא עם ומתחיל ללכת ולכל הנפגש בדרכו קורא הוא שלום גנים עולים מול פניו, מבין חריצי המדרכת, וניחוחות לראשו מעדיפים עצי אזדרכת. הכללים רוססים, והרים ריבו קרניים, הם יולידו חופה עד שמש לכלול אותה. ונכלמות משתחוות המלחמות אפיים. לעוד אלף שנים מפקות במסתרים. אלף שנים צעירות לפניו כפלג צונן כשירו עם בענף. פתאום קם אדם בבוקר ומרגיש שיבואה ומתחיל ללכת You know, so at the end they you know they sing Shalom about three four times extra. Um, you know, beyond what the, you know, you know, what the poem would demand. So, you know, clearly that's a, you know, that's, you know, that's so much a, um, a theme of Israeli popular music. I, I, I really, and again, I don't know all different popular musics of the world. I don't know of any other that has so many songs 
begging for peace. And I could I could play you only songs of peace through the last 75 years, and it would take us about 20 hours to get through all of them, um, maybe more. Um, so again, this is not that's not the primary purpose of this song. It's more about the energy of the country, which kind of keeps it alive and keeps it resilient. Um, but Shalom is always a part of, um, of its self-conception. So um, not everybody was wild about, not necessarily peace with Egypt, everyone wanted peace with Egypt, but they not everybody was really happy with leaving the Sinai, believe it or not. Um, in fact, there are those who believe that Naomi Shemer, who um, who, who, who is considered a little bit right of center, politically speaking, um, in her time, um, that in her very famous song, um, Al Hadvash, uh, you know, Al Kol Eile, um, Al Hadvash Vela Oketz, where it's like there's a phrase in there where she says, Al Nata'akor um, Natua. In other words, don't pull up that which is planted, and, you know, presumably referring to Yamit, which was one of the few um, settlements in the Sinai, which Sadat required as part of the peace deal that they be removed um, before there would be a full peace between Egypt um, and Israel. Um, I think far more Israelis were willing to give up those particular settlements. They were not necessarily part of Israel proper um, at any, you know, you know, at any previous time, biblically, etc. Um, and I, you know, and um, Chaim Hefer, who who wrote tons of of popular uh, Israeli music in his time, um, in the early '80s, wrote this piece based on, of course, Ecclesiastes. There's a time for this and there's a time for that. There's a time for war, there's a time for peace, a time to give birth, a time to die. And often the, the, the word that I've put in Hebrew there is eight, eight, because in Hebrew, the word for time in this context is there is a time for eight for this, eight for that, a time for this, a time for that. And he repeats that word many times um, in, this, um, in this setting. So this is a song of leaving Sinai. So again, the aftermath of um, of the Yom Kippur War, the peace with Egypt. Again, there's a lot of music that's associated with the peace of Egypt. You're probably familiar with with the Hallelujah that came out at the Eurovision, which won Israel for the second year in a row in Tel Aviv. And um, again, the Eurovision is decided based on um, on kind of you know popular votes from around the world. And at that moment, um, in the late in the late 70s, of course. Israel was on a high and people liked Israel at the time because it made peace with Egypt. And so um, 
I, I have to be honest with you, it's not my favorite song in the world. Um, I mean, I like it for about, you know, for about two verses, and then it's like it sounds the same all, you know, all over, you know, you know, all over again. But it won that year, and probably rightfully so. If one wins, not necessarily for, um, from you know, for musical beauty, but for how one feels about about a situation. So the 1990s were um, were very much associated with the Oslo Accords, which at first, for many for many of us and for many Israelis, were you know were a sign of hope. Um, eventually, that that um, that hope would dry up in a in a pretty significant way. One of the reasons for that was the assassination of Yitzhak Rabin, the um, the prime minister who, who who presided over the Oslo Accords, um, and this song was initially written by Aviv Geffen, um, who's still alive, by the way, still writing music. Um, but he was, he, uh, I think he was in his early 20s at this time. And he he initially wrote this song of, of uh, you know, of, um, of, uh, of wailing, of, uh, you, know, you know, of mourning uh, for a friend who died in a car accident, but ultimately it became associated with the, the the death of Yitzhak Rabin, it was sung, uh, you, you know, at his memorial. It's become very much associated with this. This was a, an arrangement that was sung by um, by a group that I really recommend if you haven't had them to to your community. They're really great. They're called the Shul Sisters. They're three of our colleagues of um, uh, uh, Lori Akers, Rachel Goldman, and um, and Rachel Brooks. Um, really incredible talents. And um, again, the song is translated as you hear it. Um, again, this is called Liv Kotlecha to cry for you from the 1990s. I think for most um, for most Israelis, and I think for many Jews throughout the world, um, whatever hope there was in in Oslo um, came to a pretty significant halt um, in the early aughts after what, at least for most, I, I would say for most Jews and for most um, for most Israelis, 
um, felt that a, a reasonable offer had been made through the through the offices of, of President Clinton and um, and uh, Prime Minister Barack and uh, and you know you know Yasser Arafat. It had been not only turned down, but it had led to the second intifada and kind of my my shorthand of kind of Israeli politics and and kind of how how Israelis responded to what they need to do about the Palestinian issue was the first intifada in the late 80s is what convinced Israelis that they didn't want to rule over the Palestinians. Um, it was the second intifada that convinced them that they didn't know what to do otherwise. Um, it was just hard to know how not to rule over, how not to control, and yet how to survive and how not to be um, basically victimized um, by terror attacks. And of course, we've seen a, um, an, another example in a slightly different context um, so so recently. So in the early aughts, um, TPAX, uh, which is a, I believe they're still a pretty popular Israeli band. Um, I, if I'm not mistaken, they're, they're, uh, they were based in Stay Road. A lot, of, uh, a lot of Israeli rock groups actually come from Stay Road, believe it or not. Um, and uh, this is a song where they're, in, in a sense, trying to deal with this issue of, you know, um, if you take a look at the um, at the uh, um, at the end of the of the first verse, it kind of comes back um, at the end of of each verse, some variation of malo asinu efotainu manishtana. In other words, what have we not done? Like we've done everything. What have we not done? Where have we gone wrong? Where did we make a mistake? Manishtana. Of course, you understand. It's like in Hebrew. Is you know, I mean, if I just say to you what has changed, that doesn't have the same relevance and kind of uh, you know poignancy to us as Manishtana, which of course we know from the Seder. Uh, Manishtana Halayla has that's like you know what's changed. What can we do to change the situation? And the word kind of matzav, the situation, which is a very kind of Israeli way of talking about whatever situation they happen to be in, um, is part of this. So we'll, we'll listen to a little bit of T Pak's. Um, Yoshvin Bevet Cafe. We're sitting um, in a coffee shop trying to understand and talk about and figure out what's going on. Let's see if this will. Oh, it's not going. Hold on. Let me see if I can get it to go. Hold on. Ah, there it is. Okay. That's what I want. So you have the odds trying to figure out what to do in the aftermath of the second intifada. Um, and then you get to the teens, um, teens of the, of the 21st century. Um, they kind of respond and foreshadow some of the issues of the Gaza conflict, which erupted with such force just a couple weeks ago. In 2014, this is actually right before one of the rocket attacks that caused um, one of Israelis' responses to it. Uh, Shlomi Shaban partnered with Chava Alberstein. And again, for those who remember, during the first intifada, she sang an incredibly controversial version of Chad Gadya, um, wondering how and when Israeli Jews had become so aggressive. Um, and again, the first intifada was the one where Israelis figured out that they didn't want to rule over the Palestinians. Um, in this duet, he's, he's basically asking, and this is really just less than 10 years ago, are we winning? Um, and, and you know, you know, she's responding, I'm right here. I'm right here. 
um, you know, uh, the the song has been compared to a heavy rains falling by Bob Dylan. Um, some consider it kind of a prophecy to what's to what came up in 2014, which seems like a minimal conflict compared to what um, Israel's dealing with right now. Um, it's called a waking exercise, an, an exercise of waking up. Targil behit Orut, Shlomi Shaban, and Chava Alberstein. So I've just been told I have four more minutes, so I'm going to get through these a little bit more quickly than I expected, um, which is fine. Um, so Wikipedia was also from the last 10 years, written by Hanan Ben Ari. Um, and again, you'll have access to this after the class. I, I believe uh, Marlene or, um, or, or someone will send this to you if you like. Um, this is an incredible song. I really recommend that you listen to it. He, he's basically attacking all of the st stereotypes that Israelis hold about one another. Um, I love this song. I've probably listened to it a hundred times. Um, and you can listen to it on your own as many times as you like after this class. Um, a number of years ago, again, right around the time of another um, Gaza conflict, uh, Noah Carell, who recently was the Israeli representative at the Eurovision, I think she came in third or fourth, um, you know, not Netta Barzilai, but, but, but very fine, a very young, very popular Israeli singer, sang with Omer Adam, another very popular Israeli singer, their version of Hatikva. I think it's a, this is probably a good one to end on. Um, there are a couple other pieces I have in this piece, but I think this is a good place to end because um, what they're doing is they're mixing Hatikva with you know with rap music so let's let's take a listen to this and i will um and i will conclude Quite a remix of um, of Hatikva. So, um, if, if I have to stop now, I'll stop now, or I can share one more thing. It's really up to you, Marlene. You tell me. Yes, one more thing. Okay. So, th at the very beginning of the class, I shared with you that contrafact, that song that was a Yiddish song about wandering, which was taken in 1912 and made into a Hebrew song about owning the land. Well, this is Noah Carell, who you just heard on Hatikva, and who was just in the Eurovision. This is her version of it. Um, of that older song of owning the land and just just take a quick look at what she does with this song. It's very traditionally, very military. Okay. 
ניר או ניר ניר, שיר או שיר שיר, גיל או גיל, שיר או שיר, ניר או ניר ניר, ניר או ניר ניר, שיר או שיר שיר, גיל או גיל, שיר או שיר, ניר או ניר ניר. עוד יבואו זירונים. עוד יבואו זירונים. כבר הם יצאו ניצנים. כבר הם יצאו ניצנים. עוד יבואו זירונים. פה בארץ חמדת אבות, תתגשם לכל התקוות. פה נחיה ופה ניצור. חיי זוהר, חיי דרור. פה בארץ האבות, תתגשם לתקוות. פה נחיה ופה ניצור. חיי זוהר, חיי דרור. פה בארץ האבות, תתגשם לתקוות. פה נחיה ופה ניצור. חיי זוהר, חיי דרור. What I really love about this song, just to conclude with, is it is such a great demonstration of Israeli and Jewish adaptation to always changing, always unexpected situations in which you find ourselves. As horrific as the situation is today in Israel, I have no reason not to hope that we won't find a way out of it, through it, hopefully someday transcend it, And get to a better place and and again I was honored to be able to teach um, for my for my friends both to be introduced by a really fine colleague Kazan Berman and to be invited by Kazan and Rabbi um, Myers so again thank you for this honor um, I um, just uh, it's a, a horrific commemoration of what happened in Pittsburgh the tree of life and of course we're still in the midst of the responding to and recovering from what happened in Israel just a couple weeks ago. So again, thank you again for, for this opportunity. Is this program recorded? I believe so. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I didn't record it, but I, but I believe I saw, I had to, I had to click something that said I was being recorded. So yes, I think it's recorded. Because I'd like to share it with uh, Israeli friends. Tada. <laughs> Thank you. Really, really, and um, Hannah's right here. Hannah, do you want to take yourself off mute? Yeah. Hannah, I will share my screen now with the prayer if you'd like to begin your ending. Okay, I'm sorry, I thought you were finished. No, you did a good job, Marlene. So we're, we're really lucky to have Hannah Kay with us today. She was with us last year to say the prayer and to be part of our community. She joins us from, from San Diego. Thank you, Hannah. Um, you can come in. It's the same it, song. Yid gadal v'yis gadash me'raba v'yalma divrach yirutei v'yamalich machutei v'chayachon uv'meyachon uv'chayei d'chol b'et Yisrael v'agala uv'zman kari v'yimru amein. Yehei shmei raba mevarach le'olam u'l'almei al'maya Yit barach vi shabach vi paar vi naram vi nase vi tadar vi talel vi talal shme kedusha brichu le ela min kol berchata vi shirata tush berchata vi nechamata ta amriam bi amavi muramein ay Israel el veal rabanan vial talmi dehon vial kol talmi de talmi dehon vial kol maan da a se kin Bi o ri ta di vi a di vi a tra hadain vi di behol atar vi atar yehe lihion u lehon shlema raba hina vi hi seda vi ri vi ra hamin vi hain a ri hin umezone re vi he u fi ra kana Min kadam avohein di bishemaya ve amru amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya ve chayim tovim alenu ve yako Yisrael ve amru amen. Ose shalom bimramav hu hu berachamin ya ose shalom alenu ve yako Yisrael ve amru amen. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Cantor Lip. Thank you, Cantor. Berman for, for really honoring us. And like Marlene said, I know a number of people who asked if this would be recorded and I, I hope people get to listen to it because it was really amazing. Thank you.